75 in the first month, which was, uh, yeah, that, that gave some further restraints on how the, the, the service and the infrastructure should be built. So we're fixing that. We're actually planning to do that in April, but with the coronavirus outbreak, doing actual intakes of people, medical intakes, that was become like quite problematic. So, so um, we're, we're setting up some, also some collaboration tools so people can do that online. Uh, but for some parts, yeah, you need physical exams and that's, that's difficult from, uh, yeah, from a distance. Uh, also, because if you do, you um, at some point have to validate identity management, uh, the identity for further identity management. So that's that's a, that's a whole challenge of its own. So that's basically um, also what coronavirus did for us. Um, what's interesting is uh, this is in Dutch, but I translated it here to uh, uh, to English. This is the model they use um, within that cooperative that is doing the, the population study. And it basically says that it has a contribution model, which is every member pays a bit of uh, contribution. And um, what happens is there's a certificate A uh, that slowly fills up. So, for example, if you participate in the study, you collect data about yourself, um, and then it is being shared or uh, sold that can generate value and that value adds up in you, within your certificate you, uh, and you um, and as soon as it hits over a, a thousand you stop paying contribution because basically that means there is a thousand yeah, euros of value with by you within uh, within the system that can be traded can be sold or can be used uh, for research purposes um, and then certificate B is for if you want to do more, if you want to proactively participate more within the research, um, and it creates um, interest, which is um, decided on by the board of the cooperative, um, and, and then uh, with the blessing of the supervisory board. So that's uh, this is a very old model which the Dutch also use for selling flowers. We literally took a lot of information from their website as well, the big flower market in the Netherlands. Um, to okay. build up uh, yeah, this cooperative way of work. And then it's the certificate C, which is basically outsiders who say, this is really cool, this study. Um, I don't want to participate, but I want to help to set it up. So basically things like impact investors or um, certain uh, uh, funds and subsidies that help to uh, set this up. This is amazing. That's basically how, how, they, uh, how they decide to set it up for uh, this research. And is it is this already in action? I mean, people contribute monetary resources. Um, so as soon as the actual intake starts, they start contributing because then they also can participate and add value in this. Okay. Yeah. So that's. Uh, I mean, that's planned to be the people yeah. that you started to collect data uh, from. They already contributed. Uh, so yeah, but at the actual intake, we start to actually collect data. We haven't started that yet because. We didn't mm, want okay. to do that this month, but Makes with sense. the coronavirus, that became a another yeah. hurdle. Yeah. Um, it's what already... else? Yeah, it's a simple scheme of this. So people from C can't be an A or a B because for A or B you have to be a member. Um, now it's just a bit of visualization, and in the end, yeah, the certificate influences voting rights. So people, you can say, for example, people of C don't have voting rights, but people of A and B have because they're, they're actually members um savings done by collecting and sharing data just participate yeah so that's basically also the, the is there slide. any form of uh bitcoin anti-bitcoin protection what do you mean with anti-bitcoin protection <laughs> like just making sure this doesn't become uh like a thing to contribute and trade your certificates and you know it just becomes a bubble yeah so so in the, in the actual formal papers there is a protection for because it's linked to the individual and uh, we um, still looked at the option to trade on uh, number c but in the end we decided to uh, to be against that for now that's uh it, it gives too many hurdles um because then you get um the whole reselling of uh, of equity, basically based on that research, um, we can still uh, activate that on a later stage. But for now, we keep it like this. Makes sense. It's simple, and 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 yeah, people understand it, and, it, and therefore it works because 
yeah, for us, the biggest um, uh, hurdle has always been trying to make people understand what we aim to do and then get people on board to actually uh, think about that and participate in that. Especially when we started in uh, 2015, the world was entirely different. Um, we, I, I've had, yeah, I've had conversations with people. Like if I recall them, they were, yeah, re remarkable. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that was it. Uh, that was it for me for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Sander, what, what I'm, I'm missing now and what I've, what I found is as a layman in a way, I have an ICT background, but still for this in layman. Very attractive is that you have this service interface, uh, and I think giving the the um, the, the messy mud and the fertile soil of <laughs> all the scientists, data scientists, and and people collaborating in Corona Y that might be interesting. You know that service interface that you can plug in in various stages of the pipeline, various. Yeah. This is so, cool. Like, I really love the, the diagram. Makes 100% yeah. sense. Thank you for creating it. Yeah. Have, do you have that picture of that surface? Uh, yeah, 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 that's over here. So this is in the, mostly on the, the scientific part, but basically yeah, our entire cool. infrastructure is services based. The reason we do that is because, yeah, like you said, you need like more than 100 people to actually create and build this. And uh, the thing with cooperatives is that you work together with groups of organizations and people. Um, so what we always aim to do is try to get people on board with their own system, with their own company, with their own solution, whether it be sensor data or a new algorithm that's, that's really fancy for some reason. And the ability for them to just plug it in as a new service on the infrastructure so people can access it and people can use it. And we did that as well in um, uh, the Hermann part which was used for uh, literature reviews, the first stage of the, the infrastructure. Yeah, that's, uh, but the entire, the entire uh, infrastructure is built up like that. So also, for example, for the individual parts, which is what we call the, the, the for life box, every service or organization that you work with goes through a certain form of interface which gives uh, a form of legal protection and also a form of, uh, it's also a security protection, but mostly for the legal stage, because if you enter into an agreement with a well, foreign or a different organization, you have various legal stages that you go through. And that's also like monitored and registered through this interface. Yeah, this, this is great. I mean, to borrow an analogy from the current situation, we are kind of looking to establish these types of different receptors for every every single cell of this giant organism, right? That's essentially yeah. the interface that, that we need to recreate. Yeah. That is exactly also uh, one of the analogies uh, we've used in the past as well. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's basically also like biology. You... You have different cells with people collaborating in it. Cells split up, um, cells expand or uh, they shrink. Um, and that's also how our system <coughs> should work. We should be able to add functionalities, add people. People can split up, for example, with the B12 research. Um, at some point, uh, uh, the one of the uh, primary care people we work with came to us and it was like, look guys, I have a really big problem. There is this big group of people that don't want to participate in the B12 research because um, they don't agree that only people should be able to own their own data. They think animals should be able to own their own data as well. So this was apparently some very hardcore animal rights group that was interested in the research at first, but disagreed on the fact that animals should be able to have rights. And we were like, look, that's not a problem at all. Just give them a separate cooperative with their own organization to let them do their own research and they can do animals as well. That's like, that's not a problem. That's uh, yeah, you have to be a little bit creative in your identity management because that's a little bit different uh, with animals. But apart from that, yeah, that's, that's yeah. exactly possible. There's no problem that, uh, 
And then he looks at us like the, the practitioner, like really weirdly, like, oh, yeah. Ah, maybe you're right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. whatever people want to do, it's all about empowering them and giving yeah. them infrastructure. And if there is something that makes sense, that means people will gravitate to it naturally. And if not, then not. It's a self-selection and kind of evolution of this giant fractal. Okay, so I have a couple of questions, and obviously, we're in, it's not possible to cover everything that you have so far. I really love it. I think there is a, like again, beneficial ways how we can uh, push this uh, project forward. Uh, we're definitely gonna hit you know thousand and beyond that. I'm I'm confident in that, and there is no shortage of people. But you know the there are many different angles how i see this proceeding i would like to have some form of uh, you know materials structured materials to get acquainted with uh just to get um the understanding how you were uh pitching it previously what are the core pieces that already exist uh key uh, people and key you know resources involved um the other thing is i would like to better understand how we can position this exciting project with um, the current timing because let's say like i go on another tv interview tomorrow and people ask me like so why are you working on this open data project and like i tell all of these amazing things like because individuals have to have a right to own their data they're like mm, you know maybe maybe not but if we try to tie that in with the current timing and necessity and explain back the, you know, the second and third order consequences of why this pandemic happened and why all the bad things are happening through the prism of, you know what, maybe if there was an easy access to tap into um, you know, a network of individuals that are sharing their data, maybe we would have you know, prevented it. Maybe this would have never happened. So if we can work on, you know, crafting that message, I think that's the core piece of it. And then we can tie it back to this idea of the launch pad. And I think we have a pretty, pretty good way to get the actual, you know, resources, infrastructure, support of any kind of organizations that we need. And especially the, the monetary support, because again, my biggest fear and the thing that basically makes me, you know, uh, not sleep at night is the fact we have these amazing people and like what happens when the, the system fights back, like when everything goes back to normal, like how do we make sure we sustain this momentum? How do we make sure that people will still be, I mean, not only motivated, but won't have this, you know, baggage that is pulling them constantly down? And I'll share that video about the great arrow of potential. But basically, the idea is that on the left, you have, you know, couch potato, just making, uh, doing things that are super easy, like scrolling Facebook, watching YouTube, Netflix, and all kinds of stuff. And on the right, you have amazing things. So innovation, you know, things that uh, other entrepreneurs are doing. And it's our natural ability to move from left, from easy things to hard things. And we want to do that, except the current system has a big dip in between, which I call corporate potato. And that is basically, you know, something that pulls people down with all the, you know, unnecessary things. And we're fortunate to observe that baggage disappear temporarily. And I think that's an opportunity for us to, you know, take advantage of that kind of breath and, you know, take that air and, you know, fight back as, as hard as we can. Yeah. And yeah. we don't have time to go to jump into it here, but at some point I think it would be really interesting coming from kind of the, the world I'm playing in a little bit to talk about gamification, not in the, not in the simple psychological manipulative sense, but in terms of how you tap into meaning for people and symbolize it and, and give it gradients and scores in a way that allow people to to activate and engage with the stuff that they really want to be doing anyways. Um, and I think there's all kinds of interesting stuff that we can, <coughs> can kind of bring in from that whole world. 
to yeah to... We, we've been playing uh massive online rpgs for so long we're so prepared for this big game which is called you know innovation and you know being uh, activating our human potential i do think there are ways to make it easier through basically you know establishing all kinds of rewards all kinds of appreciation mechanisms and social experiences because even with our social distancing uh, happening right now it's so hard to even come up with things like collaborative celebration of amazing things like we got published in wall street journal we got on tv and we're kind of like the only thing we can express is emojis in slack so today we kind of tried you know have the the little celebration moment but it, it's awkward but you know it, it has to happen yeah, that's uh, that's also that's 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 difficult. We we tried maybe maybe a tip what we did with uh, the last uh, for life support drinks because usually we always do drinks on Friday, but yeah, we can't anymore. Uh, we played online cards <coughs> against humanity, which was quite fun. So maybe that's a uh, that's a tip for you. <laughs> yeah, games are good. That, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, how do we proceed? Uh, I would say I mentioned all of the, these things and yeah. I'm not sure if you took notes of those, but maybe yeah, Daniel can notes, follow yeah. up. Um, and yeah, I, I think it takes, uh, it will take me some time to dive into this. Uh, basically, I think we can establish a Slack channel on Trello, oh, oh, a, a channel on Slack. <laughs> and call it like open data I, i'm not sure if you have another name for this project maybe you have a better one uh well, jan do we already have like a working name for this um i mean we have one for the for the various projects but you have to put on your microphone about jan <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you, you're proposing uh, is, is to, 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 to create, create uh, an environment a in our Slack for us to kind of share resources, ideate, and further identify on, how to move forward. On, on what? On Slack. This is the online uh, collaboration platform that we're using right now. Yeah. But I'm, I'm looking at the, 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 the purpose of that channel that that group that project the purpose is primarily for us to you know create this environment and just create these uh pheromones chemicals flares to light up the fire because so far you know that that has been a thing that worked in terms of structure you know people discuss amazing things but um, until there is a like a channel or group where ideas really you know grow like it's very hard to bring something to reality. So to give you an analogy, like we created four uh, channels for four teams to focus on risk factors, geography, the vaccines and transmission tasks. And, you know, the, the fire just started by itself. Uh, yeah, I, I can imagine because these are kind of uh, uh, Oh, okay. There's no. Um, this is about the, the actual work. Uh, let's say the professional attraction for uh, for for people to to jump in, pushed pushed forward by having data collections that can be worked on. Uh, but I sense that we are here uh, tuning into a different process, not a developmental process concerning you know the, the codes. And, and processing data and stuff, but the how idea. do we? Create, how do you? Uh, um, how do you create the conditions that we can align? You know, with this evolutionary process. You know, supporting the transition, making use of it. It's it, it, there's an inter a good independency. Create these conditions so that we can, you know, uh, be self self supportive in the in in a, in a way by attracting, you know, partnerships and stuff. But also to apply the, 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 the proper work, not considering codes and analysis and, and stuff like that, but in terms of uh, collaborations, collaborations in the outside world. And that's what I make out of it, make out of it. 
Um, maybe I'm not good at explaining that, so maybe Daniel can jump in. Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, Jan, as, as a, another kind of group works, um, you know, the mode selection pattern. That's really, I think, what this, what, where we're at right now. We, we have, I think, a collective understanding that what we're trying to do um, yeah. is get that uh, ideation, cross-pollination, looking at those big picture pieces and then saying, okay, now how do we, what are the next concrete steps that we take? And we're still at the stage of figuring that part out. And so a Slack channel would simply be one mode that we could choose that would allow us to, you know, to dump resources, to stream of consciousness, to dialogue around some of this. There may be a different mode that's right for this group. I also I need to quickly pop on my, my facilitator hat to just say it's 159. I know um, Arthur has a PR call he has to get to you. I have a call with, with TEDx Mid-Atlantic that, that, that's happening as well. Um, do we want to maybe by email? We can simply, because that's right now that's the common medium that the four of us are using. Um, maybe we can use that to figure out what's the next channel that we want to be using to have our yeah. ACE communication yeah and uh, again i don't mind having calls and i think calls are great and we can further facilitate the need for calls in a synchronous manner and that's what really that channel uh, provides us with so as you can imagine like we're trying to juggle million different things and channels allow us that you know a very targeted um way to channel the stream of consciousness so you uh, put stuff in there, I put stuff in there, and somehow, you know, three days from now, something happens. Yeah, right. Uh, it's, 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 it's fine by me. Uh, in, in addition to the synchronous conversation we have, uh, because I, I, um, uh, the momentum is there, but you, you worded that all, already. There, so uh, and and I'd like to see. I'd like to some other initiatives I'm taking that I must assume could uh, conf con con converge or fortify each other. So I'd like to have a conversation on that pretty soon, if possible. I, I already mentioned it to to, uh, to Daniel. Yeah, so, I'm ready to dedicate you know a lot of time to this as much as I can. Uh, please throw materials at me to process that, and I'll get back to you as, as soon as possible. That's great. And you have to jump in another call, I see. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So goodbye for now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, guys. Just, this is I, very interesting. Uh, go ahead, Danny. No, I was Thank, thank you all for, for taking the taking the time out of each of the different facets you're working on to see how those may, may link together. Yeah, let's make it happen. Let's figure it out. I'm I'm super excited because this is this is big. This is exciting. <laughs> all right, guys. Good. Thank you. Bye. All right. Oh, we go. We good spirit. Bye. Hey. Right.